Hello and welcome to Ancient Myths of the Common Era, a series where I dive deep into the mythology behind one of the greatest MOBAs of all time, known as Smite. This series will hopefully give you a better idea of who's who in the wide selection of gods and goddesses available in the world of Smite. In today's video, we are going to talk about Freya, so let's get started. Is it go? Freya is the beautiful Vanir goddess in Norse mythology. She is described as wearing a necklace called Brissingamen and keeps the born named Hildesvini by her side always. She rides in a chariot pulled by two cats and owns the cloak called Valshmer which is a cloak made from falcon feathers that grants one the ability to fly. Her brother, Freyr, and her are born of Njorver and Njorver's sister. A bit taboo if you ask me. She is married to Ulver, and with him she has two daughters, Thnos and Jersemi. Freya often assists other gods by supplying them with her feathered cloak, Valsamir. One such story occurs when Thor is forced to dress as a bride for a Jotun. One day, Thor woke up and found that his mighty hammer, Mjolnir, was missing. He frantically ran to Loki for help and told him that no one else knew of Thor's loss. The two gods ran to Freya's court to ask for help. Thor asks Freya if he may borrow her cloak of falcon feathers, Valshamir. Thor asks this of her so that he may more easily search for his hammer. Freya says she would lend it to him even if it were made of silver or gold. Loki put on the cloak and flies off in search of the mighty hammer. Loki flies all over and even flown all the way to Jotunheim, where the Jotun, Thrymmer, sits on a burial mound making gold collars for his female dogs. Thrymmer asks Loki, what is he doing in Jotunheim? Loki replies and tells Thrymmer that Thor's hammer, Mjolnir, has been stolen. Thrymmer reacts to this news by telling Loki that he has taken it. He has hid it deep in the earth. Thrymmer says he wants Freya as his wife in exchange for Mjolnir. Loki carries this news all the way back to the courts of the gods. Loki tells Thor that Thrymmer has his hammer, but won't give it up unless Freya becomes his wife. Thor and Loki go to Freya and tell her to put on a bridal headdress and to come with them to Jotunheim. This makes Freya indignant and throws a tantrum that shakes the halls of the Aesir. This causes her necklace Brissingamen, to fall off. The gods then hold a meeting to discuss what is to be done about the situation. Heimdallr suggests that Thor go in Freya's stead, dressed as a bride. Thor becomes outraged at the suggestion, but Loki convinces him to agree by telling him that if he didn't, the Aesir would be threatened with invasion by the Jotun. Thor agrees and is dressed up by Freya to look like her. Loki was also dressed up as Thor's maiden. Or should I say, she-Thor. 
The two go to Thrymmer and are thrown a feast in honor of the wedding. Thor eats like an animal and drinks like it's the end of the world, which takes Thrymmer aback. He lifts Thor's wedding veil to kiss his bride and finds fierce eyes staring back at him. Thrymmer jumps back when he sees this. Loki covers for Thor by saying that Freya hasn't slept or ate anything in eight days out of anticipation to be wed to Thrymmer. After the Jotnar's wicked sister demands a gift for the wedding, the Jotnar bring out Thor's hammer to sanctify the bride. Thor disguises Freya. Mjolnir is laid in Thor's lap, and he grabs hold of it and beats all the Jotnar senseless. And to think this all could have been avoided by either the Jotnar giving Thor his hammer, or Freya accepting the proposal. The goddess Freya rules over Folkvanger, where her beautiful hall, Sesrumnir, is located. Half of the slain peoples in battle are taken by Odin to Valhalla. The other half are given to Freya to watch over in her afterlife paradise, Folkvanger. The dead are called the Einherjar and are said to be led into battle by Odin himself during Ragnarok, the end of the known world, followed by its rebirth and its resurrection. Freya also played a major role in the birth of Sleipnir, Odin's eight-legged horse. You see, after the gods established the realm of Midgard, they decided that they needed to fortify it against invasion and attack. An unnamed builder offered to build such a fortification in exchange for Freya, the sun, and the moon. The gods agreed, but with some major restrictions. The gods told the builder that he had to complete the fortification within three seasons' time. As if that wasn't already impossible enough, they told him that he could have no help from any man to build the fortification. These restrictions were set in place because they did not want to give up the sun and the moon, and Freya did not wish to be this lower creature's wife. The builder agreed, but he wished to make a request first. The unnamed builder requested to be allowed to use his horse to help him. After Loki influenced the god's decision, the gods agreed it was okay, because a horse would not be able to help the builder win Freya and the sun and the moon. However, the horse proved to be capable of twice the work of the builder, and three days away from the summer deadline, the builder was already at the gate of the fortification. The gods met and blamed Loki and said if he didn't fix it and stop Freya from being given to the builder, then they would kill him. Loki became frightened and came up with a scheme. Loki shapeshifted into a mare in Estrus. Blah, 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 blah and lured Svavofari, the builder's horse, into the woods. The builder chased after them, and all the momentum for the work was lost. The Aesir, or the gods, found out that the builder was a Jotun, and the Aesir hate the Jotun and also are sore losers. So they had Thor kill him, and Loki 
after his little interaction with Favafari in the woods, gave birth to Sleipnir, an eight-legged gray fowl, or baby horse, that eventually became Odin's steed.